Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to be giving you some fall book recommendations because as it is universally known, October is here, which means autumn is here, which means all too well 10 minute version is here and it is time to celebrate. And if you're a reader, what better way to celebrate than to read October themed spooky books? So I have recommendations from all genres, romance, fantasy, crime, you think it, I have it. I've worn my fall themed cardigan and I think all's well that ends well. And also you cannot see, but on the side on my laptop, I actually have the fireplace crackling. Just to give me those fall vibes, because believe it or not, outside of where I am right now, the sun is blaring down. It is not, mm, it is not fall. So in order to force myself into the mood and actually, you know, give you good recommendations, mm, I've had to do a whole setup. My pumpkin's here, my cardigan's here. I have my full fall makeup on and my fireplace is here. So grab a coffee, grab a fireplace. Um, If you have one or you don't, if you have one in real life, do not actually grab it. And let's discuss some fall. But so here's my pile and the first book that I'm going to start with is The Housemaid. I've talked about this book literally everywhere. So if you follow me on all my social media platforms, you've probably heard me rant about this book like multiple times a day. But let me repeat it for you. This book is basically about Millie, who is our main character. Um, she's a housemaid and she works in different houses, cleans up, you know, all that jazz. Um, and one day she gets this job in a really rich family's home, a husband and wife. And the house is beautiful. The husband and wife are beautiful. Everything is literally perfect in their home. So she starts working. When she starts working, she realizes that the wife, Nina Winchester, is a bit cuckoo, is throwing dishes everywhere, is creating a mess on purpose for her to clean up. And she's like, mm, this girl, this chick has a problem. And so one day she's resting in her room. Um, She hears a a lock and she goes to unlock her door and what does she find out the door only closes from the outside that means someone has definitely locked her inside on purpose and that is the premise of the book and i feel like this is the perfect start to the october fall month because it's crime and this is so fast paced that i feel like you can grab your cozy sweater you can light a candle and in two hours you're gonna be done with this book and you're gonna enjoy it i really enjoy this book i actually ended up giving it a five star very fast paced i absolutely love this there's actually a whole series on this book so you know if you like this book go ham and read the other and if you're in a reading slump mm, definitely also recommend make this october you're getting out of a reading slump month so that was book number one hmm, where do we put the book mm, should i put them here you can't even see them can you here it is are you ready for the next book it is the seven year slip this is a romance book called magical realism I think basically it is a romance book, but it also involves magic because there is a jump in time where something is happening seven years prior. So, you know, it's like a Wizards of Waverly place. Not really, but magic. The main character is Clementine and she's just gone through a tragedy. So she's having a really sad time in her life right now. And one day when she gets back home from work, she sees a handsome stranger in her apartment. Obviously that man is not supposed to be here. She lives alone. I'm just gonna be a little bit, a little bit. She realizes that he lives seven years in the past. This is such a beautiful book. And after reading this book, I actually fell in love with chefs. Mm, is that, mm, yeah. I fell in love with the chef trope. If there is such a if thing. If you're a man and you're a chef, I like you immediately. If you know how to cook, that, that's a game over. And our male character is like he was sent from heaven for her, obviously. That's why it's a romance. When I started reading this book, it was, um, this book can go either way. Either I really like it or really don't like it. Because I never read magical realism before. And trust me, when I read this, I was like, oh. Give me more of this author right now. The cover is yellow. It involves magic. It is sweet. You will cry. And how much did I give this book? If I'm not wrong, I probably gave this a five star. I still think of this book to this day. I literally do. There are certain scenes in this book that I'm like, I cry. <laughs> The next book is a series. I'm also going out of breath because for some reason, even though I have a mic attached to me, I feel like you can't hear me. So I'm going out of breath and I'm also starting to lose my voice a bit. So I'm just gonna take two minutes to breathe. Okay, I think I'm back. So this is a fantasy book. I think you would call it a fantasy. So this is the first book, The Inheritance Games, and this is The Hawthorne Legacy. These are the only books I've read from the series. So this book is basically about Avery, who is just a normal average child, not that rich. She's kind of a bit like, you know, struggling for money. And she one day gets to know that she has won a lot of millions of dollars. An old man died and left her all of his money. And now she owns a mansion. And so the main focus of this book is to figure Why? out, is she given all this money? Why did the old man like her enough to give her this money when she hadn't even met this old man before? And then it continues in this series and there are also three or four mm, i think three brothers who are extremely handsome i think for this fall it is absolutely you should read this because very short chapters literally maybe sometimes two pages long 
you have a chapter. And so I finished these really quick. I actually really want to finish the series. So I might actually do that this fall. Thanks for the idea, bestie. And I think I gave this book a four star. Same with this one. I love the brothers dynamic in the series. And also Avery um, actually grows a lot in the second book, which was really nice to see because I think in the beginning, she was kind of like a rigid character. And I was like, I don't see how she is going to grow. Like, yeah, she's gotten money but now. But in the second book, she is going through stuff and she conquers. And also, is it just me or every time I see the title thing, let the games begin in this book, I think, baby, let the games begin. It's just me. Okay. And for the next book, another crime book. And this is literally labeled cozy crime. Also very thin. It's around 250 pages long. This is actually also like a series. How, you know, Agatha Christie has certain characters that she involves in her books again and again. Same with this. I think the dog, and the girl, like repeated in the book. But basically our main character is Emily. She just moved into a cottage in a village. And as soon as she's moved in, she notices that in the pond across from her house, um, there's a body floating, like a dead body. What a warm welcome. And so now Emily, her dog, and the neighbors are like on a side quest kind of thing to figure out who's body that was and what exactly happened and this is actually like a really cozy medium paced book um i wouldn't say it's fast but also it's thin so like what do you want one of the scenes i really liked in this book is where in the evening emily gets together with the neighbors in the pub and they're basically after work just having a drink and chatting about the case so it's really interesting and really fun. at times for me the main character did get annoying because i was like mm, why are you doing that everyone's own choices. How much I gave this? Um, I'm not sure. I think I gave this either a three star or a four star. I really think this would be a really nice read for this fall. And the next book we have is a romance and this is A Wild Love by Elsie Silver. I don't know. Like, literally when I was making a list of all the books I would recommend for fall, this was one of the top ones that came to my mind. First of all, if you look at the cover, there's mountains, a vinyl record player, there's a keychain. I think the image says it all. Basically about, I, I forget her name. Rosie is our main female character and Ford is our main male character. Character. So basically after losing her job, Rosie comes back to her town to stay and, you know, kind of refresh and have a peaceful hiatus. In that town is Ford Grant, who is her childhood, I guess, neighbor. Or Actually, he's not a childhood friend. He is her brother's best friend. And so when she comes into town, he is there. They have to have interactions, but they've hated each other since they were kids. So you can tell it's like an enemies to lovers kind of thing. And one of the twists that is in this book, which I love, is Ford apparently has a daughter, which he does not know about. And so that dynamic is very interesting. There's a lot of banter in this book so thick literally mm, all of it is banter which i absolutely love. Oh, also ford actually hires rosie so that is where they kind of start getting close i heard so many people talk about this book and this author and i was like mm, what are you talking about i need to know when i bought this i was like ah. like literally if i could i would want to reread this book just to experience the town scenery place where they lived it literally sounds so magical i want to be there i want to live i gave there. it a five star many quotes um have been tabbed in this book as well Brrr. another romance we have is when in Rome, another thin book. Also, just the cover itself. Mm, it give, it's giving Paul, it's giving Gilmore Girls. Actually, when I said Gilmore Girls, this couple is literally like Lorelai and Luke. So basically, our main character is Amelia Rose, who is a pop star, but she wants to run away from her pop star life. She is tired, so she comes into a town. She's driving, but her car breaks down. And this man wants his name, Noah. So her car breaks down in front of Noah's house. He offers to, you know, to let her stay until her car's fixed. So this car takes a little longer than usual to get fixed, which means she stays with Noah for that period of time. So in that period, she gets to know him. They get to know each other. I was going to say Luke. Noah is very grumpy. He, He's literally like Luke from Gilmore Girls. He hates interacting with her. He has a pie shop. Oh my God, how did I forget? The scenery is he owns a pie shop. As you can tell. This is a very slow burn book. Um, So if you're into that stuff, you'll definitely enjoy this book. For me, the romance started just a bit too late when I, when I was like, mm like um do something do something <laughs> i think i gave this a four or three star because it was a bit slow for me but also it's fall it's october i think that is okay the reason i like this book is because i loved first of all the setting of him owning a pie shop i loved the male character there a lot. was a lot of growth in him and for a lot of the book he was grumpy so it was literally i was picturing luke as i was reading this book kind of found the girl annoying at times but like noah the main male character i was like oh my god mm, you can you can cook. again at, see my thing with people who can cook or bake chef's kiss why literally i do recommend next we have peril at n house by agatha christie this is a crime book this was a book i actually read blind like i was blind by that what i'm trying to say is that i didn't know what this book was about because literally the bag does not say anything about what this book is about so the only thing it says is evil that <coughs> 
some evil. Bad thoughts and bad deeds too. It's like dry rot. I always knew something bad would happen in this house someday. So you know, like where, where do I go from that? Basically, there's this end house. I think it's like in um, a resort type place where rich people live. It's basically owned by a woman who comes here, I think like every year or something, or either she lives there. I'm, I'm not quite sure about that. <laughs> and our detective in this is Hercule Poirot. Um, a woman dies and I think people keep dying. So he has to figure out why people are dying and they're dying because they have some connection to this house. I actually gave this a three star. I was very close to DNFing this book. The only reason I didn't because it had a pretty cover and I was like, I did not just spend lots of money to buy a pretty cover to not read the book. Like it's still a good book, but for me at the time, I needed a fast book like The Housemaid and this is what came in my hand and I was like, mm, not for me today. But it's a very cozy read. I think you can definitely categorize this in a cozy crime book oh my god okay the next one is like a book it's like mm, i don't like this book i'm still gonna recommend it to you mm, yeah definitely normal people i think i gave this book a three star as well if it was in my hands i would probably give it a two star actually but basically this book is about a girl and a guy don't know their name do not care to look back and try to remember their names as well um but they both live really like normal lives like normal people but the girl has an addicted mother who is addicted to alcohol the boy i think he comes from a broken broken family and so they're both friends childhood friends that grew up together they go to college together um and all of that so now they're just dealing with their lives individually and they're also trying to help each other um along the way i guess that is literally all i can say about this book because that is all that happens it takes us from that first conversation to the years beyond in the company of two people who try to stay apart but find they can't the ending for me was very like <gasps> But people really like this book. I feel like you might like it as well. For fall, I feel like you can give books a chance in this season. So this would definitely be in there. Oh, oh my God. It's actually now a BBC program. I'm pretty sure there's like a show about this. So if you're done with that, watch the show as well. You know, instead of Gilmore Girls, just repeatedly watching that. Maybe watch something new. Um, it's written in a very interesting way. Like there are no apostrophes and stuff for conversations. It is literally just like a continuous, like the lines are flowing. It's going, it's flowing. It's not there. And so sometimes it's hard to decipher if they're thinking something or actually saying it out loud. But I guess that is the fun of normal people. Mm, I think I need to stop talking. But read this book. Woo, pile is growing. <gasps> Oh my god, we have just one book, one book left. Are you ready? This is a fantasy book as well. Caraval! This is actually a very thick book. It also matches me. It was one of the first fantasy books I read after Fourth Wing. This is also a series. There are three books, so this and two more. So this book is basically about a carnival that happens every year and you only get invited by a ticket. You have to be sent that ticket to get invited. Um, and our main characters, Donatella and Scarlet, are sisters who are basically princesses, I guess you could say. They live in a kingdom. Their father is like the ruler of this island, I guess. Yeah. I think it's an island. Um, but he's also very cruel and their mother is dead. And so they both just want to run away from the island. And so a sailor comes along to their island and persuades them to go to this carnival called Carval. And he gives them the tickets. They are on their merry way. And also, by the way, I'm talking about this so far. Um, and the fact that I'm able to tell you what this book is about without stuttering. You can tell the impact this book had on me because I remember literally everyone's names, their roles, and exactly what happened. And so the sisters show up to the island. However, Scarlet shows up a little bit later with the sailor and she realizes her sister is gone missing. She's nowhere to be seen she, she's done um a hodin and now she's told that in order to find her sister she has to participate in the game and complete the game and win her sister basically. so scarlet is on a mission to complete the games to find her sister this five star um I, this was actually one of my favorite books from the whole series five star book right here both the sisters dynamics i love because they both are so different but they also like love each other to bits i feel like the concept itself is so new and it's so interesting it's magic sparkles all of that you imagine literally i can hear sparkles in my ear right now talking about this if i could i would reread this but i won't because i have a lot of books to read on my on my shelf there. i guess maybe you could call it if like Billy wonka's movie and peter pan's movie had a baby you know oh my god so yeah, those were some of my fall book recommendations. Hopefully, um, you know, this was inspirational and you got some books that you could add to your list to read this fall. If I hadn't read these books, I would definitely give all of these a try. Even normal people. If you have any book recommendations that I could read this fall, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you've read any of these books, what were your thoughts on reading them and what did you rate them? And yeah, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really, really helps a make lot. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already, which um, more than 80% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. Make sure to subscribe to stay tuned to the videos I post every single week. And I also post on YouTube Shorts, TikTok, and you know, all of that jazz. So if you're interested, make sure to follow me on all my social platforms. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Let's